that the Lord is good. He'll give you everything. He'll give you everything. I just want to speak the name. Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Adventure Church, so glad you're here today. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to sing with everything we got today to praise the name of our God. Come on, here we go. Praise be your weapon that silences the enemy. Then praise be your weapon that conquers all anxiety.
worthy of that. Every want to teach a new song this morning straight from God's word that he's lavished his love on us, that we are the children of God. It goes like this. Come on, you hurting, all those who mourn. There's joy and there's freedom in the house of the Lord. Come on, you sinners, rich and the poor. We all need Jesus, he is our reward. How great is the love lavished on us. We are the children of God. Bought by the blood of God's only Son. We are the children of God. Once dead in sin, now born again. Adopted as daughters and sons. Aren't you grateful for that today? Come on, let's sing it together. Come every color, come every race. We need each other, we all need grace. Let love be our anthem, Christ be our King. Let's rise together, cause we're family. How great is the love lavished on us. Children of God, bought by the blood of God's only Son, we are the children of God. Once dead in sin, now born again, adopted as daughters and sons. So come join the family, raise up a banner. We are the children of God. I know it's kind of a, it's not very common that we would stop in the middle of a song and talk about what we're singing together. But listen, we want to let you know this morning that this song was written, at least that last verse was written because of Venture Christian Church. You guys inspired those words that we just sang together. And I don't know if you've noticed this before, you don't have to look around very far to figure out and to find out that we don't all look the same. And that's a good thing, don't you think? I mean, I just, I'm just uh, curious to know this morning I'm tempted to think at least that uh, it's a good thing that we all don't look like our preacher, Nathan Bolt. Can I get an amen in the room? This is my last Sunday here, by the way. And I know you're glad that not everybody looks like me. And I just want to tell you this morning the truth. Can I just be honest with you this morning? Here's the deal. I'm glad that this is not a white church. And I'm glad that this isn't a black church and it's not a brown church or any other color you can put in. This is God's church and we are the family of God lifting high the name of Christ and pursuing Christ together. So here's the deal. We're going to sing this together, church. We're going to sing that same verse again. And I want to ask you, if you believe that today, if you're grateful for that, would you sing this out with everything you got today? Here we go. And come every color, come every race. We need each other. We all need grace. Let love be our anthem and Christ be our King. Let's rise together, cause we're family. How great is the love lavished on us. We are the children of God. Bought by the blood of God's only Son. We are the children of God. Once dead in sin, now born again. children of God, bought by the blood of God's only 
his son. We are the children of God. Once dead in sin, now born again, adopted his daughters and sons. So come join the family, raise up a banner. We are the children of God. church. It's good to be the children and the family of God. Well, you can have a seat. We are so glad that each one of you are here today, and we want to let you know that if you're visiting with us, uh, we've been praying for you, praying that this would be a blessing to you today to be together with the family of God and hear from God's Word. If you would do us a favor at some point in the service today, take that Connect card, fill it out, and at the end of the service, take it to the Welcome Center or the Welcome Table in our lobby, and we would love to give you a free Venture Christian Church t-shirt, just a way that we can say thank you for being here today. We truly are glad that you're here. We're getting ready to take communion together this morning, and we have four tables set up around the room, one on each side of the stage, and then one in each of the back two corners of the room. And also Nathan will be up front here serving. If you'd like to uh, have him serve you, that's, uh, that's available as well. Let's direct our thoughts towards the cross as Michelle leads us in a passage of scripture and praise. scripture is from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. For I receive from the Lord what I pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, remember of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Lord, we are so thankful to be here in your presence. And Lord, we are so thankful and so welcoming to you. We ask Jesus that you come and you be here right in our midst. We thank you so much, Lord, for this body and blood that you laid down for us. We thank you so much, Jesus, for letting us be together, for having this wonderful family here together, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Generations, I know that you will 
keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same.
free the captives in your freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Somebody really needs to sing these words in full faith, knowing that God is still doing His work. Maybe the person next to you needs to hear you sing it today. Can we do it together? Even when we don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker. 
God, we believe that today, that you are a good God, that you are faithful, that you love each and every single one of us in this room today, that you love each and every single lost person that's in the room or outside of the room, God. And because of that, we love each other. We love as Christ loved us. Lord, I just pray that today as we open up your word together, it would accomplish a powerful work in our hearts, that it would open our eyes to your goodness and to what you have called us to. God, you've called us to an incredible life, to an incredible existence, to walk with you, Jesus. How amazing that is. Thank you for making it possible through your son, Jesus Christ. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, look at three people. Tell them you're glad that they're here today. Give them a fist bump. All right. Guys, come on up. Is it on? Okay. Tell him to keep vamping. Tell him to keep vamping. Keep going through John's prayer. All right, you may be seated. What have you guys done? I haven't even said a word. And they're giving you standing ovations. Good grief. Well, apparently you already know who this is. This is the Brown family, Dewan, Linda, Brooke, Nyla, Bryson, Logan, and I like some people's going to sleep through my sermon today. That's, that's good news. But they, they have come forward. I, I got a kindred heart with them because they're Illinois-based. I'm Illinois-based. They're from South Chicago. I'm not from South Chicago, just so you guys know. Uh, but we're so glad to have them here with us. They're involved. They're, they've been serving on teams. Dewan's up here in the drums and sometimes does communion. And Linda's the assistant uh, director of the events team. And this whole family is involved. And they have come forward today to put their membership in with Venture Christian Church and make this their church home. And so I'm going to ask you guys to repeat what you all believe. You're going to have to shout it because this is a ways away. We believe, we believe that Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the, Christ the, Son the Son of the living God. Amen. All right, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you so much for Jesus who died for our sins and took our spot, the punishment that we deserved, he took for us. Father, thank you for the family of God. And thank you for all the truths that we just sang and for the Brown family here today uh, who want to grow stronger with us and we want to grow stronger with them. Would you bless them in Jesus' name? Amen. Thank them one more time. Thank you, guys. Let's come on up. Good morning, Venture Church. Just a couple quick announcements this morning. We're going to sneak these in. Uh, today is the Venture class. So that is today right after service. It runs about 45 minutes. Uh, so if you've if you're new here or you haven't attended or maybe you didn't get a chance to sign up, we still want you to come to that. Pastor Nathan will lead that session. You can come hear more about Venture Church. You can ask questions. You can get a little bit deeper understanding of who we are and what we do. Amen. Uh, this Thursday, uh, is Lorinda in here? Where's Lorinda? There she is right there. Uh, we'll be feeding the homeless this Thursday, 5.30 to 7. So see her in the lobby. We still need a few more dishes to be brought and some volunteers for that. And new, 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 Venture Christian Church now has a podcast. Did you know that? So please jump on how you get your podcast. Subscribe uh, so you can stay up to date on the sermons if you're traveling or you do some commuting every day. How about that? A little, uh, little in-car university each and every day uh, so you can catch up on sermons or go all the way back to the beginning. I think the, since the very first one is on there all to date. Uh, that'd be awesome. So be sure to sign up for that. We're going to now go uh, before the Lord one more time. We've had amazing worship and prayer this morning, but we're going to now shift our gears as we uh, dive into God's this word this morning. Heavenly Father, we just uh, so grateful to be in this house, such unity, such openness before you, God. Won't you come this morning with your word in truth, in power, and in love this morning, God. Father, we commit our minds, our unity to you. We open our hearts before you to receive all that you have, Father. And we just bless and give everything unto you, Lord, this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Did you write that song? Good job, Doug. That was really good. That Children of God song. When our family moved to the Houston area several years ago, there were some animals that we were not accustomed to be, uh, being around, that we knew we were going to start being around. And there are some animals that were in, even on the drive down, I was thinking these animals that we've never been around are going to start having an impact 
in our life, and one of them was the alligator. I just kept thinking about the alligator for some reason. Uh, where, true story, when we first moved here, every time I walked into our garage, I would peek before I walked totally in, just making sure there wasn't an alligator with its mouth open, just waiting for me to walk into it, Captain Hook. And that's just what I was thinking. I mean, it was on, it was on my mind. There were some other animals, wild hogs. We weren't around wild hogs, but we have people in our neighborhood. They get, they get pictures on their, on their uh, doorbell app with hogs going through at night, through their driveway. I don't know. Does anybody else? Is that happening in your neighborhood? There's hogs around, so there's some good eating. We're having a potluck next Sunday, and uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, there's uh, there, there's uh, snakes. Snakes. We haven't been around water moccasins, but there, there's water moccasins in our neighborhood. One was posted this week. Uh, so there's snakes. Actually, there's only four poisonous snakes in North America. There's only one spot where they're all found in the same area. That's the Houston, Texan area. Welcome to Houston if you just moved here. Glad to have you. Aren't you glad to be in church today? Um, I, I saw a, a picture of an animal this week. I didn't even know really got that big, but somebody in Sugarland caught in the bayou, they caught an alligator gar that was 300 pounds. Anybody else see this? 300 pound alligator gar. Now that hadn't had a huge impact in our family yet, uh, but I was gonna take the kids swimming this afternoon in the bayou and I didn't know, and I'm like, I better not do that. Uh, but there was, as it turned out, all these animals that I thought would have a big impact <laughs> haven't really had a big impact, but there's one animal I wasn't thinking about that's had a huge impact and that's the fire ant. Right? I mean, I spend time. We spend money. We spend energy. I think about it when I'm mowing. You know, how impactful is the fire ant going? And this little animal that's not even very big has had a big impact on our family since we have moved down. And there are some truths in the Christian faith. Maybe you're new to the faith. Maybe you're thinking about the faith. There are some words that you probably think this is going to have big impact. Faith would be one of those words. Grace would be one of those words. Truth would be one of those words. Bible would be one of those words. But there's a word that I want to introduce to you today that is a small word, but it has a huge impact. It goes unnoticed. It goes under the radar. You wouldn't think it would have a big impact on your faith, but it has a sweeping effect on the way we relate to the living God, and that is the word first. You wouldn't think that's a big word in our Bible. It looks small. It kind of is unnoticed. That's a big word in our Bible. Actually, there's the principle of first. There's the doctrine of first, and that's what I want to talk about today. Now, Now, this word has huge impacts even in our society. In baseball, you want to get to first base. In football, you want to get the first down. In band, you want first chair. In a fight, you want to draw first blood. When you're buying a book, you want first edition. On a plane, you want to travel first class. Never done it. I want first crack. I want the first dance. I want first dibs. I want to make a good first impression. I want to finish first place. This is a word that has big impact in our society, but it has even bigger impact in our spiritual lives. I want to show you an example of that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Do you know where we jump? We jump to the, when is all these things going to be given to me? Well, there's a first. There's a first seek the kingdom, first seek God, first seek him with all your heart. There's an order to the Christian faith. There's an order to the relationship that we have with God. Paul did it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He even did it with doctrine. He said this, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. Before we get to all the other doctrines and all the other truths and all the other nuances, we first center on the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's where the power is. Paul says that has first importance. And so if you have your Bibles, go to Exodus 13, Old Testament today, Exodus 13. And before we dive into this Old Testament message, this Old Testament passage, I I need to explain this. Many of the ceremonial laws in the Old Testament do not apply to us living in the New Testament. Many of the laws that you see, ceremonial speaking, do not apply to us living under grace, living in the New Testament, but what they do teach us is the heart of God. They teach us certain principles. They're not laws, they're principles. We see how God views things. 
we see God's heart on matters. Let me give you an example. They had a law in Israel that the farmers were not to harvest the corner of their land, the, the, the corner of their crops. And they could go in a circle, leaving the corners. Now, why did God tell them that? Because after they harvested, the poor and those who had hit tough times or the homeless or whoever it was that needed food, they could come along in the fields and they could glean from the corners of a field. Now, if you're a farmer in here today and you're harvesting the corner of your fields, are you sinning? No, you're not sinning. We're not under that law, but it does teach us a principle. What does it teach us? That God cares for the poor. It teaches us that God is basically telling us, set aside some income, set aside some money to take care of those who come along your doorstep, your front door, who need some help. We ought to be willing to give to those who are on tough times. That's the heart of God. We're not under the law of the four corners, but we do see the heart of God in relation to that. And that's what we're going to hit today. We're going to hit the principle of first. In Exodus chapter 13, beginning with verses 1 and 2, the Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me Every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. And then if you skip down in your passage in your Bibles down to verse 11 through 13, it says, after the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you, as he promised on oath to you and your ancestors, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb, all the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem with the lamb every firstborn donkey, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. In other words, if you don't do it, you're going to lose it anyway. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. Did you notice a word that kept popping up in the passage? It was the word first. So I got three points for you today. Here's number one. The first must be sacrificed or redeemed. What does that mean? <laughs> Nathan, you lost me right there. We're in the New Testament. We're in the Old Testament. Thank you. This is 4,000 years ago. What are you talking about? The first must be sacrificed or redeemed. Well, how do I know if it needs to be sacrificed? How do I know if it needs to be redeemed? He gives us two animals that show us in the passage. Donkeys represent unclean. Lambs represent clean. If your clean animal has a firstborn, we are to sacrifice it. If our unclean animal has a firstborn, we are to redeem it. In other words, buy it back, and we do it by sacrificing a clean animal. Now, what does that have to do with us? Catch it. The clean has to be sacrificed. The unclean has to be redeemed by the sacrifice of the clean. Now, I'm about to share with you something. You, you, you're looking at me like, okay. What I'm about to share with you, I want you at the end to go, whoa. Okay? Are you with me? After I'm about to share with you a gospel truth, how this all ties together, you're going to go, whoa. That's amazing. So you don't believe you're going to think that way. But here it is. Here's a question. Before you were a Christian, if you're a Christian, before Christ entered your heart, were you clean or unclean? And if you don't know the answer to that, ask any parents in the room today. They're the experts. Parents, did you need to teach your children how to be bad? They just seem to naturally know. <laughs> They've come up with it. I mean, naturally, they hid the candy in the bottom drawer of their dresser, just as an example. Somehow, they just started fighting with their siblings naturally. You didn't have to teach them. They are unclean. Another question. Was Christ unclean or clean? He was clean. We were unclean. Now, here's, here's the moment. Here's where you're going to participate. The clean, Jesus, was sacrificed so that the unclean, us, could be redeemed by the sacrifice of the clean. Thank you. I thought that was good, too. Thanks. Just come down. Come down. Wait for the end of the sermon. The clean was sacrificed so the unclean could be redeemed by the sacrifice of the clean. That's what happened on the cross. That's what happened at Calvary. As a matter of fact, in Colossians 1, Jesus is called the firstborn of all creation. God gave Jesus, similar to a tithe, he gave Jesus first, he gave his best, he gave his first, he gave his firstborn of all creation 
so that the unclean could be redeemed. And here's what's interesting. God didn't wait for us to straighten up before he gave his best to us. God didn't hope, well, let's see if they behave themselves and then I'll give Jesus. No, actually it says in Romans 5, while we were still sinners, while we were, uh, were still unclean, while we were still mocking him, while we were still spitting on him, while we were still rebelling against him, while we were still in the dark, Christ died for us. He didn't wait, but he actually said, I'm going to give first in the hope that they will come to me. It's not that we love him, it's that he first loved us. He gave first ahead with the hope that we would give later. Now, there's another word that's going to tie into this. We've learned about the word first, but now we're going to learn about the word tithe. This is a dirty word in church. I know. Oh, I know where he's going now. Well, this is highly misunderstood. This isn't something that we give to God because he needs to pay the electric bill in heaven. Now, I need to back up. If he's on ERCOT, Maybe he does need a little bit because I don't know what in the world is going on. All of a sudden, they can't handle the ace. Anyway, that's a different sermon. <laughs> but if they're running on ERCOT, then okay, they do need some extra. But tithe, the word, actually means 10%. Everybody say 10%. Now catch this. If you're given 9%, you're not tithing. If you're given 11%, you're not tithing. That's not what tithe means. The word has nothing, it just means 10%. It means a tenth. That's what the word literally means. So if, if it's any other number, if it's 10.1, it's actually not a tithe. But this is an Old Testament law given not to Christians. Stay with me. You're going to like me by the end of this. Stay with me. This was given to Old Testament Jews. That was a law given to Old Testament Jews. It was really a tax. In the same way we have taxes, they didn't just have one tithe, by the way. They had three, actually, they had more than that. They had at least three tithes that they tithed every year. For example, they had the temple tax. That went to the Levitical priesthood that went to keeping the worship or the, uh, the activities of, of the Levites and the temple and all the activities around that. That went toward making sure that was in place. They also had another tax called the land Sabbath tax. They had another tax called the, profit, or the special profit sharing tax. Now, by itself, just with these three right here, they were given about 25% of their income every year. It wasn't 10%. It was closer to 25%. Sometimes I hear people say, we need to go back to Old Testament tithing. Oh, are you sure? Because <laughs> you haven't studied your Old Testament then if you're saying that. And then on top of that, they had two other giving. That's the first fruit giving on top of their three tithes. And then on top of that, they had free will giving, which by the end of the year, they were giving close to 35% of their income back to God. Now, that's interesting. That's food for thought. Emphasis here was not on legalistic have to. It was on the attitude of the giver and the attitude of the heart. Now, Nathan, see, tithe is just for Old Testament but we're, we're under the New Testament, so this has nothing to do with us. Time out. Genesis chapter 14, verse 20 says this, And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, Abraham. And he gave him a tithe of all. That's before the law. That's before the Old Testament. That's before Mount Sinai. That's before Charlton Heston did his thing. That's before all the... That's, that there's no nation of Israel yet. There's really no Jews other than Abraham and his family. That's before they're outside the Old Testament law too. And yet even before that, we see the heart of God. We see the principle of first and the principle of tithing through what Abraham gave Melchizedek. So here's another thing about tithe. It's not just 10%. It's the first 10%. It's the order of the 10% that matters. God didn't say... Wait till you have 10 sheep, and once you have 10 sheep, give one of them back to God. Because if you do that, you're probably going to give your worst sheep that's messing up your garden in your backyard. It, that's not giving out of faith. He says, give your first lamb, believing that God is going to provide the next nine lambs. It's about giving out of faith. It's the order of the 10%. That's also, and by the way, anything not done in faith is sin. And so in the Hebrew experience... The Hebrew people first came into the promised land, and the first city they took was a city called Jericho. You remember the seven marches around Jericho? 
After they took Jericho, God told them this in Joshua 6, verse 19, all the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into the house of the Lord, the treasury. He said all. He didn't say tenth. Time out. Why did God tell them, everything you get from Jericho, give back to me? What's up with that? Because Jericho was the first city. They're about to take a whole lot of other cities. They're going to take a whole lot of land. They're going to take a whole lot of treasury. But the first city, it's about the first. It's about the order. The first city goes back to God. So here's the deal. Tithing wasn't a man-made idea. It wasn't an idea came up by preachers. Don't get mad at us. Tithing was an idea that was, come, that was invented by God himself. God came up with this. Number two, the first means order matters. I want to introduce you to a word in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Are you doing that? Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, or for us that would be income or profit. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Catch this. The benefit is not for God and his power bill. The benefit is for you. It's for us. He says, first do this, first fruits of all your crops, then your barns, your vats, your life, your house, your family, your job, your situation, then you're the one who's blessed if you give the first fruits. So in Exodus 23, verse 19, he says it a different way. Bring the best, best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God, best and first fruits. I would just want you to lean in here for a second. Imagine you went and started to make furniture, woodworking from scratch, not, not restoring. I'm talking about building from scratch. And you're making an end table for somebody in Houston. You got on Craigslist. I'm like, okay, you're going to build this. And you have to put some money into it. You got to buy the lumber, and lumber's kind of high right now. You got to buy stain or paint or sealer. You got to buy the hardware, the screws and the handles, and maybe some sandpaper to sand it down if you don't have any sandpaper in your garage you got to put some money into it. But then at the end of the day, after you sold this end table to this friend, you realize that you profited $100. And maybe you put more into that, but you profited, and that's what this is talking about, your profit. You profited $100. In other words, you profited 10 $10 bills. 10, <clears throat> 10 times 10 is 100. Just so some of you, okay, anyway. There's 10 $10 bills that they gave you. Question, how much is a tithe out of $100? Some of you are like, we just left. I, once my ECT was over, it was done. Ten, one of those $10 bills is a tenth of the 100. But that's not the only question we should ask. Out of those $10 bills that's laying on those tables, or on that table, which $10 bill is the tithe? And some of you already know, it's the first one. How do I know which one is the first one? It's the first one that leaves your hand. The first one that leaves your hand is God's portion. That's the first fruits. Now, I know how it works. Let me first set aside and pay the mortgage bill. Let me first... And then after that, pay the power bill and the gas, which is $19 per gallon right now. And car insurance, and then kids' little league, and then gasoline again, and then, and then ballet class, and then vacation, and then 401k, and, and then retirement, and then if I have anything left over, hint, leftover, I'll give the leftover, and even if I have 10%, I'll give the 10% back to God, but here's the problem, that $10 bill that you just gave to God is not the tithe because you already gave God's portion to the mortgage company, and the mortgage company does not have the power to bless your life. Only God's portion that was over here, the first one that leaves your hand, then God will bless the other nine $10 bills. That's the principle of first, and that's the principle of tithe in the Bible. You know, why are we talking about this, Nathan? Because I want you to be blessed because I love you. Some will not talk about this because they don't love their church enough. And you can write me a letter. I knew it. Church was all about money. No, I want you blessed by the living God. I want you to understand that when you give in faith, not just 10%, but it's the first one that leaves your hand, that God is going to bless the other nine. 
By the way, God does more with those nine than you can do with those ten. That's the principle of first. We don't want a church full of leftover Christians. We want God first Christians. So we will not be silent on this. Now let me give you a little bit of an idea. I get, I get paid twice a month, the 15th and the 1st, basically, the 15th and the 30th, depending on if it's a weekend. So this is a weekend. This is the 15th. So I actually got paid on Friday, so the last business day before the, before the 15th. And what I will do, and I put it in my drawer of my desk, but what I will do is write the check for 10th of that so that I can bring it here today and drop it. Actually, it's still in my pocket. <laughs> yep, still in my pocket. Okay. Put it in the offering basket before our treasurer leaves, and that's giving the first portion. But I got a question. What if on Friday when we got paid before I wrote this check, Chelsea got on Amazon and bought something before I wrote that check? Not that that would ever happen or I could come up with that illustration randomly, but... <laughs> But let's just say that happened. Should I go to Chelsea and say, way to go. We're cursed now. <laughs> just gave our first portion away. I was supposed to give, no, no, no. This is not about legalism. This is about the heart. God knows that we aren't under a law. We are under grace. But the principle of first, God knows what we're doing. God knows if the groceries were ordered. And, but God is watching what is going on on the inside. And here's why I need to tell you that. Wherever you give the first is the priority in your life. Wherever you give the first is the priority in your life. So let's just imagine you are inviting our family over for dinner this, this Wednesday night. We're going over to your house for dinner. Let's not do Wednesday night because we're not coming Wednesday night because we have Bible study this Wednesday night. And uh, we're doing the first. And we already said yes to God for this Wednesday night. By the way, you're invited to that too. But anyway, let's do Tuesday night now for dinner. And we said yes, and we marked it on our calendar. And so Monday, you went to the grocery store, and, and, and you bought groceries for us, and you, got, and you said no to everybody else in your calendar because Tuesday night, preacher's family's coming over. They're going to eat a lot. I've seen Nathan, so, so they're going to eat a lot. Don't, don't respond to that. <laughs> and so we're preparing for that. And then Tuesday afternoon, you're already kind of cooking some things on the stove, but Tuesday afternoon about 4 o'clock, the Bolts text you and say, hey, we're, we can't make it tonight, sorry. Something came up. Honestly, don't try to act mature. What would you feel in your gut? What, how would you feel? Well, you'd feel hurt. You'd feel it. Because you went to all that work, you set aside your calendar, you said no to other friends, other opportunities, so that we can more, and we didn't even tell you what's up. We didn't say we had COVID, we didn't say we're sick. We just say, we're going to the pool. We just, something else came up. Somebody invited us to the pool, so we said yes. You would feel it in your gut because you would notice you're not the priority. I wonder how often God feels that. Yeah, we're going to church, <clears throat> unless something else comes up. Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll give. And you're my Lord and Savior, all to Jesus' eyes. Well, vacation. Oops. If anything else comes up, God says, sorry, you're, you get put on the back. I wonder how often God feels that. And so we do this with church attendance. It, we don't go to church every week because it's our job. I just want you to know that. If I wasn't on paid staff, we'd be in church every Sunday still. Because when I said yes to Jesus on December 2nd, 1990, I said yes to his church every Sunday for the rest of my life, period. Now, you can ask me to do something on Sunday morning. Guess what the answer is going to be? No, because God's the priority. God's the priority. I already, set my, I already said yes to him. I mean, you can ask me, but it's already done. And we'll say no for our kids, for them, for the first 18 years. Yeah, you can go to prom on Saturday night if you don't cut God out on Sunday morning. And, and yeah, you can sleep in the back row, that's fine. But you will be here. So this isn't just about money. This isn't just about tithe. This is about our life. It's the principle of first. Number three, the first reveals our heart. So I'm trying to prepare for this. We have a daughter that's seven years old, and she's going to be dating, you know, I don't know, in about 30 years, she's going to start dating. <laughs> and I've already, 
like, Chelsea, we need to get rid of all the guns right now. Let's just, let's just take care of this. Um, but I do want to know, the guy that she gets serious with, does he love the Lord? Now, I know Hollywood says you want to marry a guy that loves my daughter more than anything else in all the world. I don't. I want a guy that loves God more than anybody else in the world. Because he will love my daughter rightly when he loves God firstly. Just came up with that right there. I want a man who loves the Lord more than my daughter. But how am I going to know that? I just thought of this this week. I could check his giving records. (laughs) Now, I don't check your giving records. I just want you to know that. But when it comes to my daughter, I may call his church. And even if it means under the table money. (laughs) Hey. Tell me what he's giving. Now, why would I even think that way? Because that will tell me if he loves, he can tell me all day. Yeah, I love the Lord, Pastor Bolt. No, your giving will tell me if you love the Lord first. And so does yours. And so does mine. Because the first reveals your heart and the first changes your heart. Matthew 6, verse 21 says, where your treasure is, where your treasure goes, Where you invest your treasure is where your heart will follow. I just want to have a heart for God, but I just feel stale, and I don't know how to to change my heart. Are you giving your first to God? Because your heart will follow. That's a principle of Scripture. That's a principle of God. So I'm going to go rogue on a text that we all know. That's Cain and Abel. I don't know if you ever heard this. I'm going to go rogue on it. Do you remember that Cain and Abel both gave an offering to God? But God denied Cain's offering, but accepted Abel's offering. Do you remember that? Why? Now, what I have just heard through the grapevine is because Abel's was a blood offering, and Cain's was a crop offering or grain. But it doesn't say that ever. I looked. Now, that might be the case. So I'm telling you, I, I could be wrong, but I'm not wrong. So here's what I'm about to tell you. And I think it would tell us that if that was the case. Cain, yours wasn't blood. And it never says it's a sin sacrifice anyway, and that's what required a blood offering. I could go on and on about what. But here's, here's what I noticed this week. Genesis chapter 4, beginning with verses 2 through 5. Now, Abel was a keeper of the sheep, while Cain was a tiller of the soil. So what kind of... Harvest did Cain have? He, he would have had fruit or grain. So in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruit of the soil as an offering to the Lord, while Abel brought the best portions of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked, you caught it, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but he had no regard for Cain and his offering. Now go back a verse, uh, Jay. Go back one slide. Did you catch it? Cain brought some. But the writer goes out of his way to tell us that Abel brought the best portions of the firstborn. I don't know. I'm not 100%. It was a quick week of study. But it is possible that the reason God didn't accept Cain's was it wasn't his first. He brought an offering, but it was out of order. And God couldn't bless the rest. Now, here's what's interesting about that. Everybody says God can do anything. No, he can't. God can't lie. He cannot tell a lie. When God came down to earth and Jesus was in the form of God, it doesn't say that Jesus never lied. It said that, and it didn't say that Jesus always told the truth. It said that he is the truth. He can't lie. God can't do that. God can't be in fellowship with sin. He cannot be in fellowship with sin. And God doesn't think like us. He can't think like us. Did you know that? God never thinks of something new. Nothing ever occurs to God. Oh, I didn't think of that. that ever, God knows everything from the beginning of the alpha and omega, first to last. He knows everything all the time. There's never a, you're kidding, moment for God. So when the Bible says his thoughts are not like our thoughts, he's, he doesn't think like us. Nothing ever occurs to God. And but finally, here's what I want to tell you. God can't be second place. He's God. He can't be 
second place. He accepted Abel's offering because it was first place. He couldn't accept Cain's offering because we don't even know which place it was. It wasn't first place. Question, is God first in your life? And it's not a hard question to answer. There's proof and you know it. Is God first in your finances? Do you believe God deserves the first fruits of your income? Do you believe God deserves the first fruits of your income? Do you believe God can do more with 90% of your income than you can do with 100% of your income? Do you believe that? In Exodus 13, I'll close with this. God tells Moses, Moses, you're going through all these things with the festivals and the first fruits and, and sacrifices and offerings, but you're going to have a day one day when your kids ask you, Moses, what's up with all this? Dad, why are you doing all this? And Moses, this is, what, this is how I want you to answer your kids. Verse 8, on that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. That's what you tell your boy. I hear a lot of times, I don't know how to evangelize. God already put it in the system. If you put him first, people will ask you why you put him first. What's up with your life? People notice, there's a lot of people who believe in God. There's not many people who put God first. And when the world sees it, they take notice and they start asking questions. Why do you orient your life that way? And then you can give an answer. If nobody's ever asked you that. And then it goes down to verse 14. He, he puts it in his, ball, in his pocket again. In days to come, when your son asks you, what does this mean? All this giving, all this sacrifice, all this, say to him, with a mighty hand, remind your son, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So one day, my kids are going to ask me, Dad, what's up with this? I mean, all this. Getting to church early and writing those checks and, and giving all that you have to the body of Christ and to God. What is up with that? I'll tell you why. Because there was a day I was enslaved to sin and I could not get out. There was a day that I was dead in sin, but now I'm alive in Christ. There was a day I was in darkness, but he put me into light. There was a day I was in death, but now I have life. He is the way, the truth, and life. There was a day he rescued me, and so I gladly give my, uh, my first tenth to him. And I remember it. Young kid, one of the most impactful moments of my childhood, I used to go with my dad to church early. He'd get there early. He was a preacher, so I'd help him with communion, coffee, all those things. But on the way to church, one of those Sunday mornings, in the old Mazda pickup truck, sitting in the middle was a check. I'd never seen it before. And I remember how much was written on that check. And I couldn't believe it. I didn't know we made that much money in a year. I was just a little kid. It was just and I got a little mad. Because there were some things that we couldn't do that all my friends at school were doing. And I asked myself, I didn't ask them out loud. I still remember the price on the check to this day. But I asked myself, why are they doing that? And I already knew the answer based on his life. Every kid, just so you know, asks that question. You may never hear it out loud, but your kids and grandkids are asking themselves, What's up with your life? Is it real? I mean, there was a point I wanted to know, is this real? After that check, I knew it was real with them. Dad, why do we do what we do every week? And one day, they may, my kids may see a check sitting out on my desk because I didn't get it into the front drawer. And they may not ask me, but they're going to ask themselves, why are they giving so much? back to God because there was a day I was a slave son and he rescued me and so I gladly give back to God amen
Father, thank you for this principle of first. And maybe this has never been heard by some of the room today. This might be brand new. Or maybe this is a reminder for some. Father, I know all the arguments and how Satan's going to work this over on the way home. I know all the arguments. Father, in this room right now, would you shape hearts? Most importantly, would you shape lives? And this little word called first could change everything for somebody in this room. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for always keeping your promises. We believe you can do more with 90% than we can do with 10. Thank you for keeping that promise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Stay in your seat for a moment. You're going to notice something underneath your chair. There's a little card. There's a little piece of paper. It's not really little. It's pretty big. It's a give myself away challenge. Over the next several weeks, that phrase is going to mean more to you. It's going to mean a lot more next Sunday. But it's the give myself away challenge. Here's what I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you. Uh, here it is. For the next three months, test God on this. For the next three months, give your first fruits back to God and see how you're doing. See if God blesses you. We promise as a church, if you do that and God doesn't bless you, we'll give you your money back after three months. You say, Nathan, are you nervous? Not a bit. Because God never fails on his promise. I've never met a person, and I get asked this sometimes. I've never met a person who started to do this and they fell flat on their face all of a sudden. Nathan, we're homeless, we're on the corner, we have nothing now. What happened? We started giving to God and everything fell apart. Never heard that story. I've never heard that story. Because God promises to, he promises to take care of you. This is done in faith. I'm giving to you our first lamb. I'm not waiting for the 10 sheep to come. And then we'll give you one, God. <laughs> we give him our first, believing in faith. And anything not done in faith is sin. Believing in faith. God, I'm going to give you the best. I'm going to give you the first because you are the first in my life. And I hope today that the Holy Spirit is working on you. I know I'm letting him work on me because this goes way beyond our pocketbook. This goes into all the other areas of, of, of your life. And you say, why are you putting together a piece of paper? Because sometimes we need spurred on for our next step of faith. Sometimes if you've never read the Bible, you need a, you need a plan. I don't do a plan. I've been reading my Bible for a long time. But sometimes to get started, you need a plan to check mark. And so here, here it is. And if you're like me, if, if you write your name on that top portion, your name means something to you. My name means, my word of my name means something to me. So just by writing your name. I'm doing this for three months and just see what God does in your life. Just see what God does in your life. Just see what God does in your life. I hope you take a few moments before you leave today. We're not passing the offering baskets. The offering baskets are sitting by both doors. You have an opportunity to take this piece of paper, fill it out after the service, drop it in the offering basket on your way out. And I promise you, God will keep his promise. Would you stand? Would you sing? with us you heard your children you hear your children you are the same God you are the same God you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were providing you are providing now you are the same god you are the same god you moved in power then god moved in power now you are the same god you are the same Same God, you are the same.
thank you for being here this morning. Don't forget to pick up a free shirt if you're visiting with us. If you need more time to fill out that card, you can take all the time you need this morning. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. to be